Live from Charlotte, North Carolina, you're listening to the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Hank Hanegraaff, president of the Christian Research Institute. The reason the Bible Answer Man is on the air is to defend the Christian faith, proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to teach discipleship to his followers, because life and truth matter. To ask Hank your question, call in now, 888-ASK-HANK. That's 888-275-4265. For more information or to order resources, go online to equip.org. And now, here's your host, Hank Hanegraaff. With a reminder, thank you, Randy, that uh, you can contact us via the mail as well, Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. And uh, we have a brand new resource available to you as we are in a brand new month. This is the first broadcast day of that month, although we are a few days into, it's hard to believe, into the month of May. Incredible. Anyway, uh, the, the new resource is a resource that you absolutely have to get. This has been one of my favorite resources. I haven't offered it to you yet, but I did a podcast on the book, and uh, I have read the book probably three or four times. I absolutely love this book. And uh, it's titled, When the Church Was Young, Voices of the Early Fathers. It's written by a man named Marcellino D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio, I should say. It's a hard name to pronounce. Anyway, I got it out. Uh, but he, uh, just a great guy. I uh, love the podcast, and that podcast is going to be available tomorrow right on the web at equip.org or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. At any rate, I did want to mention this, that Sir Isaac Newton put it quite memorably when he said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. The simple truth is that the light of many, many of our most fundamental beliefs comes refracted and clarified through the towering intellects and passionate hearts of our church fathers. To, to borrow again from Newton, we indeed stand on the shoulders of giants. And many of the hard-earned truths that they brought forward were paid for by their very lies. And that's, again, why I am genuinely excited about this resource. It's a brilliant, it's a beautiful book. And unlike many history books that are dry as dust, when the church was young, pulsates with passion. And for any Christian not steeped in the rich history of our church fathers, it will no doubt open up fresh vistas guaranteed to deepen your appreciation of the faith once for all delivered to the saints. Of course, the church fathers are those great Christian writers who passed on, who clarified the teachings of the apostles from approximately the 2nd through the 8th century. And they're names we ought to be familiar with, and maybe you are. But what you may not know is just how profoundly each one of them contributed to the faith that we embrace today. Most Christians, unfortunately, don't have a perspective of history. Some can, well, some can trace their heritage back to the Reformation, but few are the Christians who have a sense of history that dates back to when the church was one. Do we really know what they believed back then? Know what happened after the death of the apostles? What, what they believed about the unity of the church and how the church ought to be structured? What the main elements of Christian worship entail? In other words, if you're going to church, after reading this book, you'll have a sense of whether the church you're going to is doing what the early Christians were in the habit of doing. 
Do we really know what happened in terms of the early church practice of baptism? Or how believers are to partake of the Eucharist, the pure body and precious blood of Christ? What it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? You know, these truths were not casually developed from some comfortable lounge chair. They were forged in the cauldron of persecution. And these self-same truths are the truths that you and I have the privilege, indeed the commission, to share with the world. Not just by continuing the critical apologetics work that the fathers continued themselves, but by deepening, strengthening the roots of your faith, roots that urgently need strengthening if we're to withstand the gale force winds of militant secularism, of atheism, of religious persecution that are growing day by day. And that's why I'm so eager to send you a copy of When the Church Was Young. Check it out on the web at equip.org. It's a rare book of history that's an inspiring page-turner, one that transforms while it informs. (laughs) I'm confident this book will bless you. It will deepen your appreciation of the incredible riches that we have in Jesus Christ and the profound debt we owe to the church fathers. I mean, church fathers like Clement of Rome. Clement was the first of the original apostolic fathers. He was a leader in the church of Rome who knew Peter and Paul and who is the earliest apostolic witness to the martyrdom of Peter and Paul. And Clement wrote long before what we now know as the New Testament was even completed. He was was clearly familiar with Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, and he reminded his readers of Paul's teaching that the church is indeed the very body of Christ. And therefore, To divide the church is to do violence to Christ himself. In his letter to the Corinthian Christians, he calls them to be faithful to the tradition of noble and righteous harmony or unity. The Corinthians not only heeded his warnings, heeded those those admonitions he gave against division, but but they continued to read his letter as part of their Sunday worship for the next several hundred years. And as the successor to Peter and Paul in Rome, Clement had a special role, and that role was to defend and preserve the precious unity of the body of Christ. And that's one of the major themes that you see in the writings of the early church fathers. You know, the the fathers that followed the apostles, they're actually called the apostolic fathers. There are three very, very significant ones. One that I just mentioned, Clement of Rome, but there are others as well that I want to talk about in subsequent broadcasts. Ignatius of Antioch, who uh, John Chrysostom says of that he was a soul-seething divine eros. What a description of someone that really loves God. And then you have Polycarp or Smyrna. Smyrna mentioned in the Bible as one of the seven churches in the epicenter of a Caesar cult that threatened to destroy the embryonic church at its very inception. But you read about all of this and more in When the Church Was Young. And again, this book does not read in a dry fashion. When you read this book, it ignites your passions. And you just can't stop reading. I, I, I've read so much in the early church, particularly when I was writing my book, Truth Matters, Life Matters More. So it's a familiar uh, territory for me. But yet when I picked up this book, I literally could not stop reading it. I, I went in to talk to uh, one of my assistants and I sat down on a chair and I said, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. And I started reading parts of the book. 
uh, to him. And, and we got engaged in conversation, but it was very stimulating. Anyway, I don't know what else to say, but the book is available for those who support the ministry, who stand shoulder to shoulder with this ministry in the battle for life and truth. Get your copy on the web, equip.org, or simply write me at Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. When we come back from the break, we will go directly to your calls. The number to dial, 888-ASK-HANK, numerically 888-275-4265. And uh, give us a call. And if you can't get through, try again, 888-ASK-HANK. Every Bible Answer Man broadcast, such as the one you're listening to right now, is made possible through the financial support of friends like you. Each month, we depend entirely on God's provision through His people to bring you more of the broadcast, podcast, and other resources you rely on. If you want a sound proclamation and defense of the gospel of Jesus Christ to continue to be heard through the outreaches of the Christian Research Institute, become a member of CRI's support team today. Call 888-7000-CRI and stand with CRI daily in the battle for life and truth. That's 888-7000-CRI. Or visit our website at equip.org. We'll return shortly with more from Hank Hanegraaff. Are you the product of millions of years of unguided, purposeless, natural processes? Or are you created in the image of a loving God? Faced with the overwhelming scorn of evolutionary proselytizers, it can be hard to articulate the truth about God's creative work. And even among faithful Christians, many misconceptions linger. The Creation Answer Book by Hank Hanegraaff puts answers to the most hotly debated origins questions right at your fingertips, giving you clarity and understanding. Learn to articulate the truth about our origins clearly and compassionately when you request your copy of the Creation Answer Book or listen to Hank's insightful answers with the unabridged audiobook version on CD. Receive your copy of the Creation Answer Book or the audiobook on CD from the Christian Research Institute when you call 888-7000-CRI or go online to equip.org. Anyone who's been paying attention knows there's a war going on, not just on traditional morality, civility, and decency, but even more fundamentally on historic notions of truth. And the enemy isn't just the onslaught of fake news facilitated by a post-truth culture and turbocharged by growing legions of ideological spin doctors. No, the real enemies of truth range from postmodernist convictions that there is no objective truth to militant scientism that claims that only science Science can determine truth, and religion is little more than primitive superstitions. But CRI support team members are not waving a white flag of surrender. They're holding the fort by undergirding every one of Christian Research Institute's mind-shaping and life-changing outreaches 24-7. To learn how you can make a difference and enjoy all the benefits of support team membership, simply visit equip.org. Truth Matters, Life Matters More by Hank Hanegraaff is essentially two books in one. Because Truth Matters, Part 1 equips Christians to defend the essential truths of the historic Christian faith. In Part 2, Hank explains why life matters more and how we can experience the height of human existence, union with God in Christ. Simply put, the map is not the territory, the menu is not the meal. We cheat ourselves of authentic union with Christ when we elevate the message above the Messiah. Truth Matters, Life Matters More is a modern classic and the magnum opus of one of the great theological minds of our time. To receive Truth Matters, Life Matters More, simply call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift in support of the life-changing work of the Christian Research Institute. That's 888-7000-CRI or go online to equip.org.
Let's return to your host, Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you, Randy. The number to dial, 888-ASK-HANK, numerically 888-275-4265. Jim in Monterey, California, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Hi, Jim. Hello, Hank. Good to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you. I mentioned to the uh, producer when I was talking to him, I've had a concern, but in the way uh, I haven't been able to call in for a while because I've had problems with my telephone equipment, but uh, I've been concerned because I'm thinking that a lot of the anti-Masonic material that has gotten out has got to be from questionable sources, and I base that on the fact that in my own family, my mother's father, who was uh, one of the Colorado founders of the Gideons, was also a 33rd degree uh, Knights Templar, uh, you know, Scottish Rite, Yorkist Rite, Shriner, uh, and uh, but he was one of the most evangelistic men that uh, Denver, Colorado, ever saw part of the uh, Central Presbyterian Church in Denver. They had uh, all kinds of uh, evangelists through their pulpit. Hey, Jim, uh, let, let me cut to the quick, real quickly, just because of time. There are a lot of people hanging on. Um, the, the thing that I would keep in mind with respect to Freemasonry is, is that the supreme being of the system itself is by definition a generic God. You know, you probably are aware that that this God is known as the great or the grand architect of the universe. Now, I don't have any problem with that phrase. It's the meaning poured into the words that can be very problematic. Because a Christian can't embrace, can't worship a generic deity but only the one God revealed in three persons who are eternally distinct. In other words, the God, the Scriptures, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and when prayer is addressed to a generic God, not in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then a Christian cannot participate in that kind of prayer. So, again, the real problem with all of this is how you define God. And, 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 and I don't think there's any question that the way Freemasonry uh, defines God is hugely uh, problematic. So that's, that's one thing that I would keep in mind. Now, that is not to say that there are not uh, good Christians who have been part of Freemasonry, but I think that if you really understand the God of Freemasonry, uh, it'll give you some pause. Uh, th because the God of Freemasonry, again, is generic. So you can address him in a lot of different ways. You can address him as Allah uh, in, the, in, in the Muslim way. So I think that has to be considered. I, again, I always say that virtually every single theological heresy begins with a misconception of the name of God. Now, there are uh, certainly conspiratorial theories that have been raised with respect to Freemasonry. So grant you that. I want to go back to the phone lines, talk to Roy in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, listening on Sirius XM 131. Hi, Roy. Hi, Hank. Thanks for taking my call. My question is really kind of simple, but maybe not a simple answer. I have heard for years in church, I've heard pastors say, we are sinners. Sometimes they'll add the phrase, saved by grace. And yet Paul wrote in Romans, I think it's chapter 5, is it, where he says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It seems to me that after Christ died for us and we have accepted that, 
Our ID is no longer sinner. Our ID is I'm in Christ. I'm not saying I don't sin. We all sin, even Christians sin. But it's not my ID. It's as, it's as if my own earthly father, when I was young, called me stupid, and I went off and got all the <laughs> degrees I could get, attained high education and high position, and yet he always looks at me and considers me always stupid. Help me out. Well, you know, I, I, I think there's truth in both saying that you're a sinner and that you're a saint. I mean, we, um, uh, we, we rightly, though, say, as you just said, that's not our identity. Our identity is found in Christ. Uh, and so we're reading passages like Philippians chapter 1, where, where Paul and Timothy are called servants of Jesus Christ, and they write to all the saints in Christ Jesus in the city of Philippi. Or if you look at Romans 1, I'm doing a little alliteration here, we get Philippians 1, you get Romans 1, and uh, you see there that Paul is writing to all those in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be saints. Or another first chapter, uh, First Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. So I think certainly our identity is, uh, is, is rightly characterized as saints. Uh, and, and, and so we can refer to us, uh, to one another, as, as saints in, in that sense. But as you've already alluded to in the prologue to your question, it's also true uh, that uh, we continue to sin, but our identity is found in Christ. Yeah, well, that's what I've always thought, and I just cringe every time I hear, hear that phrase, you are sinners, and I just sit there and I cringe, you know, well, uh, because I think there is a distinction that you just made. Yeah, it's interesting because you, you find that friends of God are even called saints in the Old Testament. So uh, the, the identity is your relationship to God. But, uh, you know, David says of himself in Psalm 51, Surely I was a sinner from birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner part. You teach me wisdom in the in inmost place. Or if you look at the, uh, the Jesus prayer, which is part of my DNA, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So there is a recognition that uh, though... I am sanctified and am uh, a person with an identity in Christ, as yet have to confess my sin and know that he is faithful and just and will forgive my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Let me go back to the phone lines, talk to Fred in uh, Stanford, Connecticut. Hi, Fred. Uh, yes. Uh, do you know anything about a David J. Stewart? Yeah. Um, he, he's uh, unfortunately not someone that I would consider a trustworthy teacher, and that for many, many counts. Um, you know, he is uh, very, very shrill in his tone. He still is holding this old canard that the Pope is the vicar of hell, uh, that the KJV is the only translation that is a true translation of the Bible. In fact, in many cases, it's not even thought to be a translation. It's more dubbed an autographer, an original that came down from Mount Sinai, hot off the plates. And uh, so they denigrate the other translations of the Bible and, and don't realize that the translations themselves have a source. And so rather than going back to uh, the KJV and referring to that as an autograph far better to go back to the original, uh, the originals or the autographs themselves and, and, and look at the translations that we get from those autographs. He also, I think, is, is involved in this whole notion of rightly dividing the word of truth, but not rightly understanding what that means. The idea of rightly dividing the word of truth becomes determining which verses apply to Israel and which verses apply to the church, as though the two are distinct, where in Scripture 
there's a real clear indication that God only has one chosen people, one covenant community. They're beautifully connected by the cross and illustrated by the Apostle Paul as an olive tree, a cultivated olive tree. Uh, so I, I think a lot of bad uh, aspects to his teaching. So you got to learn to eat the fish and most certainly try to spit out those bones. We're out of time for this edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast. Uh, my apologies to those that I didn't get to. Call me again tomorrow, 888-ASK-HANK, which uh, numerically is 888-275-4265. Thanks again for all of you who stand shoulder to shoulder with me in the battle for life and truth. If you can give, if you have some of the Lord's resources, you can invest in this ministry. It would be deeply appreciated at this time in our trek, particularly in the midst of coronavirus. You can give in a safe, secure fashion on the web, equip.org. Thanks for tuning in. See you tomorrow with more. We appreciate you tuning in to the Bible Answer Man broadcast. If you've been blessed by the broadcast and want more information to help you grow in the grace and knowledge of God, go to our website at equip.org. That's equip.org. To contact a resource consultant, call 888-7000-CRI. Again, that's 888-7000-274. Or you can write to us at Post Office Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28. The Bible Answer Man broadcast is supported solely by listeners like you. We're on the air because life and truth matter. Are you the product of millions of years of unguided, purposeless, natural processes? Or are you created in the image of a loving God? Faced with the overwhelming scorn of evolutionary proselytizers, it can be hard to articulate the truth about God's creative work. And even among faithful Christians, many misconceptions linger. The Creation Answer Book by Hank Hanegraaff puts answers to the most hotly debated origins questions right at your fingertips, giving you clarity and understanding. Learn to articulate the truth about our origins clearly and compassionately when you request your copy of the Creation Answer Book or listen to Hank's insightful answers with the unabridged audiobook version on CD. Receive your copy of the Creation Answer Book or the audiobook on CD from the Christian Research Institute when you call 888-7000-CRI or go online to equip.org.